Thank you for attending the Student Organization Summit, and we hope you enjoy the following session. If you're viewing this workshop after the live premiere, make sure to visit our YouTube channel or official website to see an archive of all past discussions and workshops. And now, on to your presentation. Hello, and welcome to Designing Competency-Based Learning Outcomes, What You Didn't Learn in Grad School. My name is Colin Fitzpatrick, my pronouns are he, him, his, and I work for Delta Gamma Sorority Executive Offices. First, I'd like to start off with a video that basically describes what it may feel like going into your first full-time student affairs role when you're asked create a program, write curriculum. And you might not necessarily have received that education while in graduate school or that applicable experience. A quarter cup at a time, a thin stream. It's supposed uh -huh. to be a thin stream, blend it really uh -huh. well, or you'll burn, David, that's not right. Okay, well that's because I'm ladling and stirring at the same time and you're just standing there. Now is not the time to lose focus, darling. This was your idea. You're the one who allegedly made the enchiladas. Yes, so try to keep up. Okay, next. Now's the time to sprinkle in the chili pepper flakes. We've already done that. What number are we on? Oh my God, is this not your mother's recipe? Yes, and now I'm passing it on to you. So try to keep up. Um, oh, next step is to fold in the cheese. What does that mean? What does fold in the cheese mean? He folds it in. I, I understand that, but how, how do you fold it? Do you fold it in half like a piece of paper and drop it in the pot, or what do you do? David, I cannot show you everything. Okay, well, can you show me one thing? You just, here's what you do. Uh -huh. You just fold it in. Okay, I don't know how to fold broken cheese like that. And I don't know how to be any clearer. You take that thing that's in your hand, uh -huh. and you... If you say fold in, one more time. It says fold it in. This is your recipe. You fold in the cheese then. Don't you dare. You fold it in. David! Oh, good. Now I see bubbles. David, what does burning smell like? So you may have the experience or the familiar experience of David Rose from Schitt's Creek while writing curriculum. You've been told to write curriculum with not much direction or education in that area. So it can be really frustrating or confusing. So today, I'm gonna to talk about the design process of how to write these competency-based learning outcomes for the programs that you create for student leaders. So the first step in the design process is going to be choosing the leadership competency that you're wanting to highlight or work with. So we're going to talk about the specific categories um, of leadership competencies as well as the area within those categories. Next, you're gonna identify the increase in competency or how you're wanting that leadership competency to change through your program or curriculum. And we're gonna utilize the KVAB model. Next, you're gonna solidify the outcome type and you're gonna utilize the big three and then the next piece is that you're gonna create a learning outcome with those pieces using the ABCD model. So kind of just like a general overview, we're gonna start with the student leadership competencies. We're gonna discuss what they are and where they come from. We're gonna to move towards that KVAB model and discuss what it is and how it's utilized. We're then gonna discuss the big three, what that is and how it's utilized. The ABCD model, what this is and how it's utilized, and then we're going to discuss how you can evaluate and analyze your competency-based learning outcomes at an introductory level. So first we're going to do a quick little intro about the student leadership competencies. So student leadership competencies are what students need to know, believe, be able to do and engage in in order to be effective leaders in college and in their future careers and as well as society. There are tools for program development, curriculum design, as well as assessment. 
and they're utilized in order to create opportunities for students to effectively engage in leadership. So the Student Leadership Competencies were created by the Student Leadership Competencies Foundation in 2008. Um, and there is a couple, I guess, different main sources that these were all taken from and combined from relational leadership from Kumis, Lucas, and McMahon in 2013, Social Change Model by Aston in 1996, The Five Practices of Exemplary Leadership by Kuzis and Posner in 2008, as well as The CAST Standards by Dean in 2006. So the relation, relational leadership area was something that was added in, of course, later, clearly because of 2013, um, after these original competency, the Competencies Foundation was created in 2008. So we're going to discuss competencies, how they're organized, as well as how outcomes are developed, basically. So the kind of components of competency, there's eight different categories. And within those eight categories, there are 60 areas. So if we're moving in a, in a progressive order, you choose your student leadership competency category. You then choose the area which in, within that category. And that is like your two, part one, part two of your competency components. Next, you're going to discuss the four dimensions of that specific area using the KVAB model, which we'll discuss shortly. And then finally, you're gonna utilize the ABCD model to create that specific learning outcome. So utilizing these um, the components and the two models listed using, and then those four um, linear, I'd say areas from category area, dimension and learning outcome, you will be able to create um, specific learning outcomes that will make your curriculum easier to create and assess. So the specific categories are learning and reasoning. There are 10 areas within learning and reasoning. Self-awareness and development, six areas. Interpersonal interaction, 11 areas. Group dynamics, four areas. Civic responsibility, six areas communication, eight areas, strategic planning, five areas, and personal behavior with 12 areas. So now we're going to discuss this next competency creation um, dimension as the KVAB model. So these specific categories are now going to be used and broken down into four dimensions. So we're kind of moving towards that um, learning outcome ABCD model towards the end of this process. So now utilizing the KVAB model, um, these are the four different dimensions that I mentioned now um, that you want to kind of think about and utilize when you're then creating your um, final learning outcomes, that is. So first, um, the K in KVAB is knowledge, which is knowledge of or understanding the value of a competency. So do I know how to effectively execute the behavior related to this competency? So like, does the student or individual participating have the general knowledge of said specific leadership competency um, in, or in order to potentially effectively execute the behavior? Next is value. So the value that's placed on a competency. So do I believe the value um, is existent or do I believe that this competency is important? Um, if a student or participant does not believe that, you know, the competency that they're gonna be learning through a program is important, they're not gonna find value in it. Um, and if they don't find value, they most likely won't have the level of engagement that you're looking for. Next is ability. And ability is the internal motivation to engage in a certain behavior or a skill level to perform a certain behavior. So do the participants have the ability, which is motivation or skill, the ability to be able to effectively execute the behavior related to this competency. So there could be some competencies that are more basic in nature, and there can be some that are a little more complex that take a little more maybe leadership experience um, or education. So maybe that might be best for your older students or senior students. 
um, that might have the ability to, you know, effectively execute the, the behaviors that are related to the competency that you are utilizing for your curriculum. And then lastly, the B in KVAB is behavior and, or engagement in a certain behavior. So do I engage in this competency when the situation arises? So when the time comes and the student has learned said skills and they have knowledge of them and the ability and they value them, are they then able to engage in that specific leadership behavior or that competency effectively? So in order to specifically utilize this KVAB model, starting with knowledge, we are wanting to identify the increase in competency. So as an example, we'll go back here to learning and reasoning. So do you want to enhance the understanding of learning and reasoning? So that's that specific knowledge area is where you are I guess, choosing where the competency is wanting to increase for the participants. Next is identify or continuing to identify increase in competency with value is, do you want to enhance the value that the participant places on the concept of said category that you choose? Um, this could be, you are potentially utilizing information to, um, convince individuals that these certain or specific competencies are important for their, their future career or their experience as a collegiate leader. Again, moving on to ability, do you want the participant to acquire the skills needed to engage in, an example again, learning and reasoning? So what are you doing in order to help them acquire the skills that are needed or that ability, motivation, and skill? And then lastly, do you want the participant to engage in learning and reasoning? So those are all the, the, the kind of four areas and you have to think of when you're creating curriculum and then kind of writing these, these learning outcomes um, that, are, that your curriculum is gonna be based off of, you have to be able to align with these four areas to truly have kind of a holistic, um, perspective or view on that learning outcome in order for the student's knowledge to be changed, their value that they place on said skill, their ability, as well as being able to utilize said competency um, after um, or during or at some point um, in, their, in their education or afterwards. So next I'm going to talk about the big three and the big three are outcome types. So the big three outcome types are learning, which you want the participant to learn as a result in their participation. So these kind of align with knowledge or value within the KVAB model. And then application is you want the participant to learn how to apply in real life situations. So having that value or ability and then impact. So you want something to be impacted to prove an ability or behavior exists. So ability and behavior. So as you can kind of see, we're narrowing it down um, from the competency area to the KVAB, now to the big three. So our, I guess it's helping you kind of whittle down um, the specific content in order to then finalize and write that specific learning outcome. Next, you're gonna utilize the ABCD model in order to actually write learning outcomes. So the first part of the ABCD model is your audience. Who is learning the outcome or who, or sorry, who is the learning outcome directed towards? Is it students, participants, advisors, staff? It's really important to know whom your audience is in order to be able to write learning outcomes that are gonna be specific to the program or curriculum that you're writing. Next is behavior. And this is the observable and the measurable action word. So basically um, if you utilize truly any verb from Bloom's taxonomy, um, that is gonna be 
something that is going to be really helpful for you in creating um, your learning outcomes list. So professionally, if I'm writing learning outcomes for a program that I'm doing, I have Bloom's taxonomy like on hand in order to use and see those specific actionable verbs from that list um, that are really helpful. Next uh, is the condition. So the environmental condition or the equipment used, this is optional, but it only makes the learning outcome that you create more specific and stronger. So the example of that condition or equipment used could be given a specific case study, et cetera, or it could be utilizing the resources provided or anything of that nature. So that's like a condition of this learning outcome. And then finally, the degree, which is the standard of acceptable performance. This is also optional, um, but an easy example of, of the degree would be like to successfully, um, or you could even say to partially or to any, any kind of descriptive word that shares the standard of performance um, of the individual who's participating in the program. Um, and how it aligns to that learning outcome. So as I mentioned before, here are kind of the um, specific verbs for Bloom's taxonomy that are really helpful in creating learning outcomes. So you could say the audience is students, the verb is calculate, given, or here, we'll, we'll do a better example. We'll say solve, so that's under analyze, to successfully. So we can say students, uh, part, or we get, we'll say participants. Participants um, will solve a societal issue given a specific case study. That can kind of be the full learning outcome. So. Um, a better example would be given a specific case study, which is the, the condition. So the ABCD model doesn't necessarily go in order. It's just more catchy to call it the ABCD model. Um, but you can start with the condition, whereas given a specific case study, the participant will be able to successfully conduct a needs-based assessment. So the condition is given a case study that is optional. The participant is the audience successfully is the degree to which you know this learning outcome is achieved um, which is also optional and then conduct a needs-based assessment which is the behavior so a and b are truly the two most important and needed parts of the learning outcome so you could even say the participant will be able to conduct a needs-based assessment great that is a learning outcome if you're teaching um, the individuals in your curriculum how to create and conduct a needs-based assessment but these are additional specific conditions and degrees of which the learning outcome can be, I'd say, enhanced or made more specific to your learning outcomes. Um, and this can help with your own personal assessment of the program to determine if there was an increase in a competency level. So now if you utilize all those different pieces uh, to create a learning outcome, I'm gonna kind of now go over just a brief overview of evaluation and assessment basics. So evaluating and analyzing student leadership competencies, the first way that you can do any sort of assessment would be a self-evaluation. Um, this is where students basically report what they believe or their perceived development was from the program. Um, with this, definitely would recommend a pre and a post assessment um, because the students would, of course, create or do their self-evaluation before the program begins. Um, and then if there was any, I say, more confidence um, in the specific competencies that were taught or shared within the curriculum of the program, um, you can then directly measure if there was an increase um, to any of the specific um, pieces that you're assessing with the post-assessment. Um, in self-evaluations, you wanna form your learning outcomes into a question. Um, so the learning outcome that I gave as an example, the assessment question would be, 
given the specific case study, were you able to successfully conduct a needs-based assessment? So forming that learning outcome into a question um, allows for the participant in order to directly self-report what they believe their development was due to the program or curriculum that was um, presented. And it can be quantitative or qualitative. So um, quantitative meaning there is going to be a, a potentially a specific scale or a rating, so more numerical based, um, or qualitative where you can um, allow for students to give a little more specific information rather than potentially just selecting a number. When analyzing results, um, of course, you want to assign a numerical value to the responses. Uh, so you can determine the, uh, the averages for each evaluation question, which is quantitative, and then categorize or create summary of responses or like a thesis or different themes that you pick up is qualitative. So uh, potentially if you ask uh, a student to maybe like describe how your learning has changed through this program is more of a qualitative question, um, they would be able to specifically write a, a sentence or a few sentences of, of how that has changed. And after viewing the results of the assessment, um, you might pick up on some specific themes between answers from students to determine um, if a, you know, an attitude or a learning outcome competency was actually increased from the program or what the students directly learned. So evaluation and assessment of learning outcomes determines if a program or experience achieved its intended purpose. So I'm sure with being in the higher education student affairs world or even in student life or being in a student organization, you understand or you know or you hear about assessment, how important assessment is. If you're not actually you know, creating specific or direct learning outcomes um, for a, an event, a program, a service, um, an educational seminar, um, you're not actually able to measure if its intended purpose is being achieved. Um, so by creating learning outcomes and, you know, the assessment or evaluation that goes along with it, you're then able to view the results and see if the program was successful or not and what potential changes, edits or additions or subtractions even um, that can be made in order to make it more successful and make it to where um, there is a, a better chance or a better way of achieving the attended purpose of the program. So I also want to kind of highlight some resources, um, and the more the better. I used a lot of different resources to, to kind of create this presentation. Um, and with especially the um, student leadership competencies, um, you are definitely going to want uh, to buy this book. Um, the Student Leadership Competencies Guidebook um, goes further into depth. So I kind of showed you all those eight different competencies, um, but I didn't show you the total of 60 areas within those competencies that you're going to want to go more in depth in um, and utilize. This um, guidebook is going to be extremely helpful um, in order to um, take those specific leadership competencies and build curriculums, programs, um, or any general learning outcomes with it. So as a graduate student, um, I mean, it potentially could be a little pricey for you to purchase on your own, um, but I would highly recommend um, that you work with your supervisor or your office or the general area that you work in in order for this to be purchased, because um, I would say it's definitely worth the, worth the investment um, in order to create specific learning outcomes that are, you know, going to be helpful in assessing your programs and services, um, as well as being able to, you know, share the impact and the purpose that student life leadership and different programs has on the collegiate student experience. And other than that, if you have any questions or anything, um, 
please. I, not, I apologize. I recently started a new position at Delta Cam Executive Office, so I have not gotten around to be able to change this final um, piece of the program. Um, but feel free to email me at colin.fitzpatrick at gmail.com, or you can reach out to me on social media at Colin Hugh. Um, go ahead and you can put any sort of questions or things that you have in the live chat on YouTube. Um, I will be, um, depending on the time that this is posted, hopefully be able to actively answer them as they come through. Thanks so much. Thank you for watching this presentation. To see other presentations, workshops, and discussions, feel free to utilize our YouTube channel or official website.